Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. Hey there, Rob Novell here with the CNS podcast, The Best Day Yet. Hope all is well and that you are getting everything ready for Christmas this weekend. Hard to believe, but we are there. So Merry Christmas to you from the CNS family. We are excited about this season. We know the real reason for the season. We're excited to celebrate the birth of our Savior this weekend. Hey, today's episode, I'm excited about this. This comes from, I believe we've done one of these already. We had a CNS staff retreat. I got my staff together in Gatlinburg in May of 2021. We were able just to to spend some time visiting, hanging out, just socializing, being a family. But we also did some recording. We intently scheduled some teaching time that we wanted to get together while we were together as a staff. So this is going to be another panel discussion today from our staff. This is uh, John Groves. This will be um, Billy Blackwood, Shannon Newman. And again, we had Jeff with us at this staff retreat. And so Jeff Stice is part of this today. And that excites me because the topic is great. It's called How to Toot Your Own Horn Without Blowing It. There's a thin line between being pushy and pushing ourselves, and we're going to get some great insight and perspective from Billy Blackwood, Shannon Newman, Pastor John Groves from a pastor's angle, and then Jeff Stice. So sit back and listen to this, and uh, just, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Merry Christmas. This is, a, this is a little bonus Merry Christmas gift to our listeners. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about uh, the subject of how to, how to toot your own horn without blowing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because it happens in in oh. in our world and uh from a pastor's perspective there are so many easy ways that a guy could just blow it before he even shows up on property all right so let's talk about it from your perspective um talk to me go ahead jeff oh my word um you know the first thing i try to do is when i get to um uh, a place that is uh, scheduled me to to come and share. The first thing I do is I thank the pastor or the promoter for having me right out of the shoot, because um, I really am grateful for that, and I think it's important that they know. Um, and people aren't people are smart, you know. They can tell if you mean it mm-hmm. or not. Um, so I think you need to uh, examine your your um, motives for wanting to do what you do, first and foremost. And then when you do show up, I, I think it's it warrants uh, a thank you. You know, uh, when you go in, um, just try to be as nice as you can. Um, that right right away will will set the uh, relationship with you and the promoter or the pastor mm-hmm. right out of the chute if he sees that you're wanting to do what he wants. It's character. Exactly. Exactly. Um, plus, you, you, to me, a, an audience in a church a lot of times will take on the personality of their pastor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if I can get to know the pastor and if he likes to have fun, cut up, and if he's a a guy, you know, that uh, I feel comfortable talking to, that helps me in front of my my audience. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as when I get on a platform, I'm in a a season in my life where my whole approach um, is is trying to uh, have a conversation with God when I sit down and play through my music. And I hope that that is something that I communicate with with an audience Um, because there is such a fine line and I'll tell you who told me this your brother Mm -hmm. Jimmy when I first started playing for the Blackwood Brothers 
Uh, Jimmy said there is a fine line between confident and cocky. Mm -hmm. And it's a line that uh, a lot of people cross. And my hope in this season that I'm in, I, I, you know, you can't look in the past. I've probably crossed it a lot in the past. But my hope is that people want to see a little bit of um, humbleness, mm -hmm. yet confidence, you know. Uh, because when you're on a platform, you're trying to sell yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be a vessel for the honor and glory of God, but people have to believe what I'm saying mm -hmm. to them. And uh, <clears throat> so, in essence, I am trying to sell what I'm doing. Um, when it comes time for the offering, I don't do that. I just, I feel better about turning it over to the pastor. Uh, if it's a promoter, most of the time I'm there on a, a previous agreement, you know, so it never comes up. The record plug, or... CD plug, as we call it now, uh, product pitch now, I think's what they call it. <clears throat> um, I'm dating myself, record. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what a record is, it's this big round black thing with a hole in the middle of it. It's a big CD. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> CD. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. I have always taken the, uh, the approach of selling the song more than how good I might have done it on mm -hmm. the recording. Mm -hmm. uh, you can name songs that everybody's familiar with, on your project, uh, highlight the good ones. And, and when I say good ones, I'm certainly not belittling the other songs, but the standards, you know. If I've got Amazing Grace on a CD, I'm gonna say Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. That song, those songs, the melodies, they sell their self. And they're tried and true, and, and people will come to the table and ask for a song, you know, a specific song. So. I have spent the entire hour, hour and a half selling myself. There's no need for me to do it again by holding up a seat. Boy, you should hear the way I play that song, you know. Um, so I think the content of your CD can can be a, a huge deal when you are trying to let people know what you have available at your table. Um, shake every hand. You know, if you don't buy anything, come by and shake my hand because thank you for letting me be here. Um, that's just the whole thing. Uh, what Jimmy said to me about it's a fine line between uh, confident and cocky, man, has that stuck with me through the mm -hmm. years. Uh, it really has. The, so there are times, and I know that all of you guys have dealt with this, not just in your own ministries, but in those that you've also helped, those that have come through the groups and, and those that we've met at conferences, things. <clears throat> There's there comes a time when you're in a venue where people don't know you. You know, how many of you heard me before? You know, how many of you heard such such group before and all this? And there's always going to be somebody that's I, I'm new. I don't or I just got saved or I don't know. I don't go to church or whatever that that is. And so because they don't know you, then how do you approach saying this is who I am without saying this is who I am? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How do you promote? How do you say toot toot without going the wrong way? Mm -hmm. How do you promote that? <laughs> um, I'm in a I'm in a different situation than uh, than a lot of artists are. Uh, by the nature uh, of the the fact that the Blacker Brothers have been around for going on 90 years. There's a there's a history with that and there's a familiarity with that, that and a standard and a standard mm -hmm. yeah I mean, and you know so ninety percent of our clientele uh, are older and Jimmy used to my brother again to quote my brother used to say you know if you go to a secular concert and hear the Temptations you don't want to hear them do a bunch of songs they never sang you want to hear them do the Temptations hits mm -hmm. and and he would was making the the analogy to when people come to a Blackwood Brothers concert, they want to hear Blackwood Brothers songs. I mean, we have a we have a a repertoire that is familiar, and people expect a certain style from the Blackwood Brothers. I, as I've been leading it the last seven or eight years, I've tried to um, fine tune that and more narrowly focus that. Um, and I hope I'm addressing your, your question because mm -hmm. so, for some people this may be a little 
not no not applicable but it just is where I am um, we about seven or eight years ago really put all of our eggs in a basket of doing a CD that had some of the greatest new songs um, I've heard in years it was a flop people just were not interested in hearing the Blackwood Brothers do new songs no matter how great they were I mean we did radio promo we did everything it was just bleh, you know so then it came time to record again I felt like the Lord gave me an idea, and I, I said, um, uh, the idea was do a, a CD of all standards, there's classic songs, and do them with just a piano. Uh, he touched me, what a day that will be. Without him, I'd rather have Jesus. If that isn't love, without, uh, I think I said without him, uh, who am I? Uh, you know, the blood, the blood will never lose its power. I mean, just... Didn't you do the love of God on We there? did the love of God on there. Every song on there, if people, if our clientele picked up that CD, they would be able to sing along on nearly, if not all, the songs on there. And we did it with just a piano, uh, which is kind of bucking the trend, too, with everything's, you know, mm -hmm. big, big production nowadays, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love that, personally. But it's not who our people come to hear. So we, you know, I actually had to talk our record company into doing that. They, they, they looked at me like, are you sure you really want to do this? And I said, yeah, I'm sure we really want to do this. I said, here's the list of songs. And so we cut it. It's been a huge seller for us. Uh, cause our people love those old songs. So it came time to record again. And I took it a step further. Uh, I'd been arranging hymns for us to sing a cappella over the course of a few years. And I said, let's just do a whole record of a cappella hymns. So we did. Another big seller for us. Um, my my point being, you have to know who your who your audience is, and this is where yeah. I feel like this applies to anybody listening, regardless of whether yes. you've been around ninety years or two months. You have to know who your audience is and who you're there to minister to. Um, we benefit tremendously from almost ninety years of of history. If we go to sing anywhere, uh, you know, I say, how many people have ever heard the Blackwood Brothers? Seventy five percent of the hands go up. You know, how many of you have been following Black Brothers since the 70s? It's still 50%. I mean, mm -hmm. just we have decades-long fan base, which is a blessing, tremendous blessing. So in some respects, what we do is tailored to who our audience is. And I'm not sure that that translates across the board, but I'm, I hope that people can take away from this. The point is, know what your audience is there to hear. If you're there to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ and your songs communicate your heart to people, even if, even, if they're, even if the song that you're doing is not their favorite cup of tea, you're still going to gain ground with them in just being honest and real and exalting the Lord. Um, if you're there to uh, force a style down people's throats that's what you want to play, you're probably in it for the wrong reason anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to direct this at you, Shannon, okay. because um, you've pastored and been in the music side of, of, so you know both. Let's say do's and don'ts. A guy calls you out of the blue and you don't know him and he says, this is who I am. What are you listening for on the phone where you say, if he says that, it's immediate no. If he says this, I'm okay with it until I get to know him. It's like, give me some do's and don'ts. Uh, first off, I don't think you should ever make the assumption that they know who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, because uh, recently there was a, a video with Bill Gaither and Harry Connick Jr. And what I thought was really neat was Harry Connick Jr. called Bill Gaither Mr. Gaither, and Bill Gaither didn't make the assumption that Harry Connick Jr. knew who he was. And I think that's a very important thing, just to explain who you are. And then kind of explain your heart. I mean, why are you in this? Mm -hmm, you know, true. I mean, because uh, I know what, I mean, I know Jeff, I know Jeff's heart, I know Billy, and I, you know, I know the Blackwood Brothers, but I also know Billy's heart, but I know that. I think you need to, to figure that out because some churches, you may be wonderful, you know, as far as, I mean, you're in it for the right reasons, but you might not be the necessarily the right fit for their people at that particular point in time. So uh, I think you need to just basically do something initially just to, re to build rapport. And I just always think it's good to, you know, if you're new, 
just ask questions. Just you know, I mean, because a lot of you know a lot of the students that this is tailored to, you know, you know, say pastor, you know, say. I'm starting out, this is what I feel, you know, first off ask is, you know, is this a good time to call, you know, I mean, those kinds of things. Yeah. And ask them questions about what would you do, you know, and then, then say, you know, you know well, allow me to send you one of my CDs or, you know, nowadays it's so important to have a social media presence, particularly YouTube, things like that. Get some things and, and put them up so you can send links or whatever, you know, and then follow up. I mean, that's just basic cold calling from business, but the difference with what we do is you really have to know someone's heart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and be humble because this is an opportunity not only from God, but it's an opportunity to go into someone's church. And, you know, I try to avoid, I don't think you should go in and tell a pastor that you want to lead their people into the presence of God or, or anything like that because that's that pastor's job. I mean, know your place. And uh, but to me, on an initial call, I think that's just more of what you should do. Okay. Now, going back to something that, that Billy said, my mother was always great with this because you know when when I started out singing and I was in high school and stuff like this, you know, I was wanting to find that you know. Whoever sang it, I was wanting to, you know, soundtracks were really just kind of starting to come out as far as the cassettes and stuff. But she would always say, you'd, you'd go and sing some hymn, and she'd say, people like what they know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and like looking into Lawrence Welk, he would never do a song that was uh, less than 10 years old. That was just his standard. And, you know, if you're going to do something new, earn the respect. You know, uh, Michael Blue Blay, secular artist, you know, he writes his own songs and stuff, but he did like three or four projects before he ever did anything that had his own material on them. You have to earn people's, you know, respect and earn that to introduce something new. So that's another thing I guess I would point out is don't go in there with, you know, you could be the best songwriter in the world, but if they don't know them, it's really hard to get, get it set up. You said, you, you brought this word up several times and that was ask. And from a pastor's perspective, uh, which I know you've been there too, um, a big thing for me is don't make demands to me. Right. I don't know you. And even if I did know you, if we don't have that kind of relationship, don't assume, like you said before. So let me give you a, a bad example, okay? The phone rings, I answer it at the church, and it's a, a young singer. And on the other end of the phone, I hear this voice, and he says to me, um, hey, this is who I am. Um, yes, I, you know this, these other people that I'm aware, you know, I'm friends with and all this. And I said, oh, yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm getting the association now, which I, I like that. Um, I know some people don't like the name dropping, but I like to know, oh, you're familiar with somebody else that, I'm, that I might know. And um, the longer the conversation went, it turned into... This is when I'm coming, and this is when, and you, and, and he's, and this is what he told me. He said, This is what I do, so I'll do this part in this, in the Sunday school hour, and I'll do this part in the worship hour. And then, and I said, and I immediately, I'm like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Number one, I'm the pastor here. I don't know you. So, number one, I'm not going to just let anybody into my, my pulpit mm -hmm. that I don't know. I mean, I don't know something about you. And so I explained to him that's not that date's not going to work. We planned for another date, and once again, it wasn't in his schedule. But he wanted to make a demand that I I should respect the fact that he was going to bless me with his presence. <laughs> and I just didn't feel the spirit move in that manner. <laughs> so I I pretty much told him no, you know, and 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 a few other thoughts that I had in my head at that time, but. Um, I, I look at it this way. If it's a ministry, then treat it as though it belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was a gentleman. He didn't force himself on mm -hmm. people. He offered. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so if you, if you believe in your ministry <clears throat> and you believe that God's working in ministry, you can offer that. But give them the opportunity, number one, to get to know something about you, like you said, you know. And then... And then if they receive, 
then say, well, what would fit best for you? What would you like? I'm able to do all of this, but I'll do whatever you ask of me. Mm -hmm. when, when we were traveling, there were times that pastors would say, um, I don't want your sound system set up there. I want it over here. And we, our, we, had, we gave them two words. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's not my church. It was... We, so we so we did all of that. Another thing, let me, if you yeah, know, I'm please. sorry to interject like that, but I had a situation where some, I had a deacon that basically came into a meeting one day. Oh, I ran into such and such, and if you heard them, and I'm like, yeah, I'm familiar with them, you need to have them. And number one, what the person that tried to pull that stuff off didn't realize that particular deacon really was a pain in the butt to a lot of this. <laughs> that was not the person to ask. And I've had people when I was serving as minister of music that would come and, and that was fine and I could take it to the pastor. I wasn't in the position to make that assumption, but at the same time, the pastor would never have talked to anybody directly. You kind of need to know the church, mm -hmm. you know, and if you don't, get online and find that out. Find out who leads their music and if you know oh, somebody in there, right. who should I talk to first? Mm -hmm. You know, because you just don't want to short suck it and leave a bad taste in someone's mouth or try to, you know. Can I speak to that? Like that? Yeah. I have known uh, quote unquote booking agents who get really upset when the pastor won't return their call. And like, like you, or like both of you, I have been, a, I've been a pastor uh, and mm -hmm. I know that I could have 30 people every week in my church doing something special. The phone rings off the hook. Hey, we're coming through. Can we sing at your right. church? We don't have time to schedule everybody that that's coming through town, or everybody that wants a place to sing. Or the finances. Or the finances. We just don't, it's not, it's not realistic, it's not possible. And so my caution to people would be, just because you have an opening doesn't mean they have an opening. And you need, need to be respectful of their calendar. And if they, if they can't have you right now, thank you, Pastor, uh, tell you what. And, and maybe, maybe it's just the music minister, and I don't mean just, but a lot of senior pastors mm -hmm. will deflect all those calls to a music minister because that's under his you know, under his jurisdiction, or her jurisdiction. Um, because a senior pastor is not there to answer the phone, mm -hmm. unless it's an emergency. And um, so just, you know, don't take it personally if they don't have you in. Just realize they can't have everybody in that calls. And it's all about relationships. So if you have a relationship with someone, yep. start there, and your reputation will build itself as someone who either is a pain, don't have them in, or they were great, have them in. You can't, you can't approach it like you're doing them a favor mm -hmm. coming to their church. Mm -hmm. They're doing you a favor by letting you mm -hmm. have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the relationship thing, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many artists now, um, and that's a wonderful thing. But you're not going to have dates just based on who you are 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. When I say who you are, I'm talking about who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be my relationship with John, my mm -hmm. relationship with Billy. Mm -hmm. uh, do I call you throughout the year or do mm -hmm. I text you throughout the year and mm -hmm. say, hey, how you doing? That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All of that is, is building a relationship mm -hmm. with people. And... Um, <laughs> You were talking about how do you let people know who you are when you're going to... Uh, I actually enjoy being in front of people who have no clue who I am. Um, my break the ice thing is how many of you are seeing me do this for the very first time? And uh, when people raise their hand, I always go, wow, if it's any consolation, this is the first time I've seen y'all too. You know, <laughs> and I get a laugh and... They're like, okay, well, he he can cut up. It's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's no way if I raise my hand and go, how many are seeing me for the very first time and nobody raises their hand, uh, or everybody raises their hand, I don't go, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> don't you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you've got to, mm -hmm. you can sell yourself by being humble mm -hmm. and and that automatically will elevate you if people you know, the, like you. The Bible says to let the Lord be the one to promote you, to promote you. right? And 
uh, I, and, and I don't mean to jump in on top of you, but you're not. I had a guy that came. Well, I, we we invited him to come, and I talked to him on the phone weeks before he showed up, and then the day he showed up, we sat on the front row, and I and he told me he said I I have played in this particular venue, all right, and it's it's a it's a uh, an amusement park style of place, but there's a lot of gospel music that goes on. And he and I so I asked him. I said, "Are you in this for ministry, or to promote your show?" And he said, "No, it's ministry." And I said, "Well, then do me this favor. While you're here, just minister to the people. Let that be your testimony. Mm -hmm. Don't waste 45 minutes of time talking about the show." Because chances are these people didn't go to your show. They don't know your show, mm -hmm. and and it, and it went very bad because for 45 minutes, every other word he said was about the show. I I I play here. I'm on 13 seasons at, and it was all about that. And then he gave about 15 minutes at the end of real good, what I would say, ministry style. And at the end of the service, he came to me and he said, with his calendar, and he says, so, when do you want me to come back? <laughs> and I told him, you'll never be back as far as I'm concerned, because I asked for one thing, and that was just do ministry. To me, that means let God work through you. Mm -hmm. Don't let you know the stuff be what promotes you. Let God do that. People will know more about who you are, like, by the humble mm -hmm. and let God be seen through all that. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you'll love this. Um, there has to be more than your abilities. Mm -hmm. You have to offer people more. Mm -hmm. That never came became more true to me than one time at the National Quartet Commission when it was in Nashville, Tennessee. I, I was uh, the young guy. I was looking in the... Uh, the auditorium I was playing for the Rex Neyland singers at the time, Jake Hess walked up behind me, and I can't remember who I was watching, but they were a new group, they were very good, and I was just sitting there listening, and Jake comes in, he steps up behind me, he, he says, hey, you know, they're really good, and I turn around, I say, oh, I know, aren't they great? I can't, and he said, so what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said, why would I go see them in a church, or why would I go buy a ticket to see them? There has to be more mm -hmm. than just being good. Relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, you develop relationships with people. I've, I've told countless students that uh, if, if you can um, endear yourself to the audience, then the night is easy mm -hmm. because you've opened up a relationship one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one with them. Mm -hmm. And chances are they probably will come back to your table and support you because you made the effort to try to get to know them. Um, uh, humble. Please be humble. <laughs> I want to piggyback on something Jeff just said that uh, they'll probably come back to your table. And I know we wanted to cover this a little bit in this session if we can. Um, I have a tack that I use on on product, and it is um, this is what we have available. Our latest is acapella hymns. The one before that's classic. I list some of the titles, and and uh, and I say obviously we make some profit on the products, the CDs and stuff that we sell. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, these are anointed songs that will minister to you long after we're gone. Yeah. And how many of you have family members who don't know Christ, hands go up. How many of you have friends, co-workers who don't know Christ, hands go up. Um, neighbors who don't know Christ. I said, would you invest in a CD, and I'm not trying to sell you a CD, but I believe in the message of these songs. Yeah. Because there are people who will listen to a gospel mm -hmm. song that will never darken the, the door of a church. No, oh, I know. How many of you will invest, and I want to challenge you to do that. Come, you know, our CDs are 10 bucks. Come buy a CD tonight. Think of somebody right now who needs to know the, know the Lord Jesus Christ Come by and get them a CD tonight. Um, you know, and I, I, we've got some historical things because, again, we've got a long history. So I, I, I mentioned those things, but it's primarily my, my point is these are ministry tools. 
Right. These these are not just oh something we sell because it helps put fuel on the bus. You know, yeah, yeah, it helps, but that's not why we do this. We're not we're not doing this to make make money necessarily. Mm -hmm. We have bills to pay, but we're doing this because we believe in the message in this music. So I challenge you to uh, uh, support it in that way. How did you? How did you? Um, we, so towards the end of a concert, usually is when product is being shown. You know, hey, we got we're, we got these T-shirts, these mm -hmm. CDs. This is our new project. This mm -hmm. is this all of this. What? How do you promote that in a way where it's palatable? It doesn't leave a bitter taste like, oh man, just another CD. Mm -hmm. But but you, because here's what I would do, I'm, and, and I'm jumping way ahead here. Okay. Uh, what I would do is I would say this to people. I'd say. How many of you like this music? And and usually you already know the answer to that because they've clapped or they've smiled or they've amen or something mm -hmm. like that. How many of you like that this music? And and hands will go up or they'll clap and all that. I'll say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back to the product table and I want you to buy three or four of these CDs. How many of you don't like this music? And I don't let them raise their hand, but I say, if you don't, I want you to go buy four or five of them, give them to people you don't like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but one way or another, but you've made them laugh yeah. and all that, but it leaves it palatable to them so that when they do approach, the concert's over. Mm -hmm. But when they do come to the table, you're still real. Mm -hmm. You're touchable. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name the Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www.cnsmusic.com. As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet.